let's check if we can uh, spot some uh, silver streak just a little down the road, medium term. Ashok Wadwa of Ambit joins us now. Uh, Ashok, good morning. good morning. Greetings of the season as well for you. Thank you. Well, uh, first up, uh, before we get to the markets uh, and your investor conference, which we are awaiting with a lot of interest, uh, the GST. I mean, uh, you are a tax man for the longest time. Uh, do you celebrate it or do you think uh, there is time to celebrate? Well, I think uh, we must celebrate. And what we must celebrate is uh, the, the, the resolution of this <coughs> government to be able to implement GST and be able to address all the impasse situations in a relatively short frame. Mm. You know, we've all worried about when it'll come and how long it'll take for the GST to get implemented. So I think there's complete clarity that the government is committed to its rolling out GST on April 1, 2017, and that we must celebrate. Mm. Okay. Having said that, anything new of that magnitude is going to be chaotic. It's going to take time for the whole supply chain to get fully settled. And I would believe that that chaos and that confusion in the short term will mean some element of duplicity, some element of, uh, you know, inefficiency in the system. And, and, and therefore, until those issues get fully resolved, the impact of GST will not necessarily be fully, fully known and fully appreciated. And therefore, there will be more time to celebrate a year down the road. Okay. Ashok, uh, good morning. Um, uh, let's uh, drill it down to a bit of the granularities. I mean, in terms of the sectors like FMCG, there clearly is some bit of relief, uh, you know, for some of these cigarette makers, some of the FMCG companies like Colgate, where the tax rates have, are much lower than what would have been expected earlier. Um, how did you read into that? And what do you think that could mean for the sector, say, over the next one year? You know, I personally believe that uh, the government's focus was A, implement GST, and B, try and make it as inflation neutral as possible, perhaps even aid a little on the side of inflation. And therefore, you can see the bias. Yes. Mm -hmm. The bias is very clearly in favor of goods and commodities of mass, of mass consumption. And to that extent, those companies and those products and those goods will certainly benefit. The general rate on FMCG all put together was between 22 and 25 percent. It's now been put into the 18 percent category. Most people thought it may be put in the 28 percent category, and therefore there's certainly relief. And I think uh, I've not seen the market. Yeah, today, Colgate but, and HUL are all yeah, up. Yes. But I'm saying perhaps the only companies that are doing well in this environment are the FMCG companies because of the positive bias of the finance minister. At the same time, I think you know this government has made it very clear that we intend to be tax neutral, if not tax positive, mm. that we intend to ensure that there is adequate amount of tax collected to be able to compensate the states. And where is it going to come from? If it's not going to come from... The luxury products. You know, if it's not going to come from normal goods, uh, it's going to come from luxury goods. And there you can see, again, the bias against luxury goods is also quite obvious. Yeah. So I think in that sense, the government is playing up its intent quite, quite clearly and, and quite transparently. Okay, well, now let me come to the investor conference. Uh, what are you all picking up as the main themes? Are you uh, uh, looking at uh, the economy picking up? Are you looking at pro growth oriented sectors, you know, uh, financials, uh, industrials, uh, capital goods? But it's, it's interesting. Um, our London conference was on 26th of June, and the Brexit vote was on 24th of June, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. It was a Friday and a Monday. Yeah. And almost everybody expected the UK to stay in. Somehow we had a contrarian <laughs> feeling. And, we, you know, it's interesting. We actually invited an economist, a uh, very eminent economist in the UK, to talk about Brexit. impact of Brexit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And that was weeks before Brexit actually happened. So now you're holding two days before the Trump we election? We are actually <laughs> holding it on the day. So what's your feeling about the election? <laughs> uh, we Since you got it, the Brexit right. Yeah, we are holding it on the day. Well, you know... I've never been good at predicting polls and politics, but, but uh, if I look at the markets, and I always believe that markets are perhaps the smartest indicators of, of what the likely outcome is. They got Brexit are. wrong. They got a Brexit <laughs> wrong, but you know, this time around, uh, if I look at what's happening over the last two days and then I read the newspapers and all the polls, I think it's going to be a very, very Thanks. close, very close to the wire. And I think it'll be it'll be only foolhardy who will predict what the real result will be. But but it's going to be very very close, okay. close enough uh, for the markets to be uncomfortable now, for sure. So getting back to your conference, then you have a lot of interesting companies participating. I notice many from the banking space. What's your view now on financials, considering that we've had uh, 
some hits and some misses this earnings season? You know, I mean, uh, obviously the quality of assets has improved, but then you are talking about quality of assets having improved without the public sector banks and, and, and perhaps ICICI having still to announce their yeah. results. Access has clearly shown uh, serious deterioration in the quality of asset. But overall, otherwise, there has been uh, a positive bias. Um, certainly in the retail asset segment, there have been no negative surprises. Yes. And that's clearly a very, very positive, positive outcome. I'd like to believe that the worst in the banking sector is over. I think there is an acknowledgement of the magnitude of problem. Okay. There are different, uh, different uh, solutions that are being proposed and thought through from capitalizing, raising new capital to monetizing non-core assets by the banks. It's a slow process. Uh, as I always say, acknowledgement is the first step of resolution. And to that extent, I'm positive that that acknowledgement has happened and that there are banks are now quite actively engaged. Uh, the resolution of the SR asset, uh, you know, the discussion on, 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 the, on the Reliance Towers business, these are large transactions. And, and the fact that these transactions are happening uh, and these transactions are happening when, when many uh, individuals who were circumspect thought they wouldn't happen is a very positive indication. It's an indication that the banks are active in addressing the solution. It's positive that corporates are realizing that they need to find solutions to, to address the banking problem. And in that sense, if there is a collaboration between the banking sector and the corporates, you will see some or many of these assets addressed. You know, the loans are in stress doesn't mean that they don't have good underlying assets. Mm. And if there is a mechanism to monetize those underlying assets, I think uh, some of the stress will get addressed you know, Every banker in the country tells me that we will be fine only if growth comes. Mm. Otherwise, there is fresh problems. So what's your view on that at Ambit uh, uh, and at the conference? Uh, are you looking at this upturn in the economy at all? Or do you have to pick stocks without that premise? So, you know, our view, uh, Lata, is that if you look at consumer durables and if you take data for the last three months, um, there's clearly positive bias in terms of oh. growth. Two-wheelers were, four-wheelers are starting to happen. I think the first two weeks of October were relatively weak. But if you look at August, September numbers, they were quite positive. You know, we uh, saw very good numbers in tractors. But when we looked at all the FMCG guys, it was actually contracting. Two, two wheelers were all right. Okay, yeah. Four wheelers were perhaps mm, not yeah. yet showing. And you know, we always believe that the, the consumption pattern starts with two wheelers. Okay. If two wheelers have a positive bias over a three month period, then that's the starting of a positive consumption cycle. We think that that process may have Stand. begun. Mm. It's not very visible yet, but we think that process may have begun. This quarter is very critical to demonstrate whether that growth is a real growth or not. If, as expected, this quarter shows positive outcome on, on that segment, we think the consumption cycle and the uptake in consumption has begun. Um, it's going to be a few more quarters before general consumption picks up, and then it's going to be a few more quarters before the investment cycle picks up. We think, we think that somewhere in the first half of the next fiscal year, you will start seeing very positive outcome of a, of a strong consumption cycle. And then perhaps in the following year, uh, which will suit the ruling party well, uh, you will probably see also an uptake in the investment cycle. So we, we have a positive bias at this point of time. Of course, global events apart. Global events, as we see both, both no what, what, what Fed anyway. does as well as what happens in the US election, uh, it has an all-encompassing all effect and have a significant impact on the sentiment one way or the other. Okay, I'll come back to the markets, but lest we run out of time, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on the whole Tata Group saga. I mean, you know, it's unfortunate that after such a long and illustrious history, the group in, in itself is mired in so much controversy. But as uh, investors, long-term investors in these stocks, um, w should one be perturbed or... Uh, should, should one trim positions, yeah. basically? Well, you know, listen, what, what, what this unfortunate episode shows is that it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, there are corporate challenges, there will be corporate disagreements, and there will, be, uh, there will be actions taken, which in the short term may perhaps look a little different from the character of the group. Uh, let's not also forget uh, that, you know, Mr. Tata, when he took over in 1991, had to face somewhat of a similar situation. 
um, hmm. at that yes. stage people we had the same yeah, debate yes darbari se kushi modi ajit kekar in yeah. 1991 92 we had the same debate a group which has never been mired in controversy how come you know that group is getting mired and we all started asking questions about is he the right leader etc hmm. etc many years later hmm. his actions proved to be very very correct now i'm not saying uh, you know many years from today what will happen in, in this matter i have no idea and, and and no knowledge of facts as to why this has happened and how it has happened all that i will say is that it has created some element of debate within global investors i happened to be in the us when this happened and almost all discussions were sabotaged because mm -hmm. everybody wanted to discuss why this could have happened um, because the tata mm -hmm. group as we all know is in many ways better than the best mm -hmm. uh, certainly within within asia uh, but listen you know it it shows that it's a corporate group uh, and and you know i'm a great believer in the philosophy that no individual in a company or in a country is indispensable mm -hmm. and i always believe that you always find the right leader once the incumbent so they will come out, out unscathed you feel I, i mean my own view is that uh, it's a very strong group and i keep going back to the 1991 mm -hmm. episode mm -hmm. and i keep saying i was around and i know how much controversy Mr. Tata's actions made, uh, and and it was quite acrimonious at that point of time. And it yes. was not just one; it was here. It is, of course, unfortunately. I was a cup between. reporter, but I remember. Yeah, yeah, and there were many, many people there, and many powerful sartraps from the Tata Group. Uh, Absolutely. And, and over 20 years, what a wonderful job. Uh, Ashoka, uh, you have to give us some idea of where you see the markets one year down the line, two years down the line. I mean, will you keep the faith? Is Nifty going on to uh, achieve uh, higher highs in uh, 2017? You know, my, my colleague Saurabh Mukherjee is an expert on this subject, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this, that we certainly have a positive bias. Okay. So if you have money, you will buy stocks. <laughs> That's the short point. Perfect. Okay, you have a lot of interesting companies coming to uh, speak at your uh, conference. Uh, uh, Century Plyboards, Lal Path Labs, we just spoke to them, Chola Mandalam, Sri Cement, uh, DCB, all stocks which have stood out in their own sectors. So we will look forward with interest to what you have gleaned from the conference. Thank, Thank you. you very much for joining us. Thank you.